My name's River. And my name's Jordan. And this is our van, Appa. So here we are in our kitchen and living area. And I'll start up here. This is where our instruments are, where we keep anything music related, our guitars, ukulele, all of that. And then from going over to here, this is our pretty much our plates and bowls and spices, um, paper towels, cups, things like that we keep up here. So in here in this cabinet, we like to keep our teas, extra sugar, coffee, um, all of our supplements and vitamins that we take. So up here we keep our hatchet um, right here in the kitchen because it's easier to access and we typically don't use it a whole lot during the summer. Um, but during colder months and things like that, we, we take it out to make fires all the time, campfires, and if we need to cook outside, it's just super handy to have it like right here and just and slide it out really easily. Um, eventually we would like to add our knives up here as well to access easily. Um, and then this lighting is really nice because it's warmer. We didn't want any LED lights and our lighting up here can be a little too bright. So we like to dim it down a little bit. And so when I'm cooking, I like to have some extra lighting in this general area. So this really helps. And just to have some greenery and plants make me pretty happy <laughs> in life. So had to add a little bit of that. And then going down to the more kitchen area, we have our propane stove. It has three burners and it has a nice little oven which is very handy and we really enjoy. And then moving on down here, we have our big pantry drawer and it keeps all of our dry food and probably 80% of it is all snacks. <laughs> Coming over here, we have our silverware and our knives that we typically use very on a daily basis. And then this other drawer is just extra spatulas and things like that. Um, and then down here we have um, where we keep like our French press, our blender, extra water containers that we fill up um, for hikes and, and then come back to the countertop. Up here it is a light like butcher block um, and my partner built it so that way you can just lift it up so we can have some more counter space when we're cooking, eating. It's really nice and this is where we like to sit and hang out the most. Um, a very nice little cozy nook that I think I spend the most time in. And then underneath the sponge seat we have our fridge. Very handy, very discreet, which I really like. So in our kitchen, I feel like our storage space is just right, honestly. Like we even still have a little bit of extra space and I don't feel like it's too much. I feel like we can add like some extra things in there over time if we needed to, but it seems to be just right. So I was always an outdoorsy kid. Um, I spent a lot of time outside growing up, uh, whether I was whittling sticks in a creek bed somewhere in Tennessee or in my teenage years backpacking through Appalachia or the Sierra Nevada, Yosemite, and now doing like rock climbing and uh, adventure sports outside here in Moab. Um, throughout the years, my relationship with nature has only intensified and the nomadic lifestyle certainly enables me to nurture that relationship and to form the most deepest and rawest of human connections with the community and with myself. So. For me, I always knew as a kid that, and into my teenage years, that I wanted to travel, see the world, see everything. I just wanted to constantly move. I didn't want to settle and live in the suburbs. I'd, and I enjoyed being out in nature all the time as well. So whenever we met, he introduced me to van life. So it was my way of like knowing I wanted to travel, but he showed me how to do that. And I just felt like it was such a perfect fit. And I was totally on board, especially when we met young. And it was like, yeah, I will literally live in a van with you and follow you anywhere. <laughs> Thank you.
coming over to this side of our kitchen area we have up here our bookshelves um, we like to read and um, so this is very handy I like how it's close quarters and tight kind of helps keep the books from falling out especially when driving um, and then coming down here we have this whole wood panel over the door and it kind of frames out like a nice window for us and we have just collection of magnets we've collected over the years like before we lived in the van even on our travels and then coming down here we have our sink um the sink i think is just the perfect size for our our van and for us at least it's just deep enough and not too deep not too big and not too tiny either so we can pile our dishes in here clean them very easily which I really like. And another cool thing about our sink faucet here is we can rotate it out and it turns into a shower. Um, perfect height for us, right above our heads, so very handy. Again, we have more counter space, so I like to take my dirty dishes out, set them here, and then wash them and then lay them on a towel on this side. And that's kind of like my little system. We have this beautiful sun piece that's like all like stone, clay and it came from River's childhood so it was very important to put in here. Um, and then coming down here below the sink we have all of our first aid kits, um, baby wipes, bug spray, things like that, maybe some extra toiletries so it's perfect space for that. And then below that one we have our gray water tank, our laundry detergent, extra toilet paper. Coming up here we have our office drawer. That's where we keep all of our paperwork for the van and for us and laptops, notebooks, things like that. And then we have our trash below that. And the trash I think is like a perfect size, not too small, not too big. Um, and I like that it's hidden that we can always just pull the drawer out. <laughs> So pros and cons of living in a vehicle, like I mentioned before, you're, you're forming these really deep connections with people and you, you find that you're out of nowhere a part of this really awesome community of people that live in their rigs and there's always a time where you, you look around and you think this is, this is a fairy tale, but life keeps changing and you have to move on, so that would be a con um, and a pro. And there's lots of overlap between like pros and cons and living in a vehicle in that sense. Like the old phrase, like the building is never done. I mean, some people might think that that's a bad thing. Um, I, I quite enjoy it, you know, cause life is always changing and you can always um, make it better, so. I would definitely agree about meeting people on the road. You immerse yourself and you have these deep connections and then they have to leave or you have to leave and like move on with your own life but it's kind of amazing because in my experience I've been able to run into the same people and then maybe not see the same people for a long time or never again but it helps you enjoy that moment more than you probably would compared to like living in a house and seeing your friends daily on a daily basis. Moving into the van wasn't very hard I think for either of us it just felt more natural and right um, in the beginning it might have been a little bit of like how do we want to organize things like it gets a little tricky there um, so you just have to find like what fits best for you I think when it comes to that. One thing I'd like to mention though is a lot of people glamorize this lifestyle and um, there seems to be this conception that it's always a fairy tale <laughs> it's not always a fairy tale um, it's kind of a trade-off, you know, I'd rather be worrying about where I'm going to sleep tonight or what I'm going to do today in the morning um, than worrying about a landlord or, or bills to pay or uh, clocking into a nine, nine to five job. You know, it's just, it may suit you, it may not. We're not gonna sugarcoat it, but I do encourage people to get out, get out in the world and challenge yourself. For us, mm -hmm. this allows us to lead the life that we wanna live, yeah. um, but, to each is their own. Okay, so this is our bedroom, and what better place to start than the bed? We have a eight inch thick mattress on top of marine plywood that I set on 
two 600 pound capacity drawer slides. So the bed actually slides out of the back like a giant drawer, um, which is really great for a more immersive experience, whether at night looking at the stars or in the day, um, just cloud gazing. So um, once the bed is actually out the back doors, these benches uh, go under the bed. And so we have uh, more room to host people. There's usually a lot of people in this van and we run out of room. So we like to push out, of, push out the bed and uh, have people sit there. Um, inside of the bench, uh, there is just clothing, like more seasonal clothing, jackets, hoodies, long sleeves, or vice versa. If it's winter, we'll keep all of our summer clothes inside. So up top, we have our clothing storage. It's two separate cabinets. We like it up top because we can just wake up out of bed, sit up and pick out what we're gonna wear for the day. It's also nice that these cabinets have door struts, so it just stays open and we can take our time um, looking at what's clean and what's dirty. <laughs> Below that, we have some more compartments on this side. I think she just keeps um, her clothing accessories, just like belts and scarves, things like that. Uh, moving along to the window, we have some hanging hammocks, which I'm quite jealous of. She puts oracle cards and crystals and just like little knickknacks inside. Uh, below that, we have these sunken in planters. She loves her plants um, and she was willing to compromise on more storage for her plants. Uh, she also is able to fit some books. Towards the back, there's another compartment and inside it's just like socks and uh, undergarments, things like that. Going around to the back, we have a shelf. Uh, we don't really use it that much to actually put anything useful up there. It's really just artwork, um, but I wanted to maximize the amount of storage we could potentially have. So uh, moving forward onto the ceiling, there's this uh, map of North America showing all the indigenous tribes and it doubles as an easel. So we can paint and draw and uh, just work kind of off of this easel, which is really nice. In front of that, we have a Max Air fan and um, it keeps it cool. I'd like to put another one in the living area so that we have more of a, more of a cycle of air running through the van. Um, maybe I might put like an AC unit because it gets really hot <laughs> where we are right now. So moving down to my side, I have two cabinets housing my clothes as well. Um, I keep all of my clothes in, in bags. Um, that way, if, if something rattles and the latch comes undone, which often happens on bumpy rows, uh, when my clothes fall out and onto the bed, it's still in the bag. So I can just pop it right back into the cabinet. Um, moving downward, I have two uh, compartments on either side as well. I think in the back one, I just keep a ton of books and in the front one towards the sink, I have journals and art supplies. And I opted for my cubby space next to my side of the bed to be more, more for storage. So um, yeah, boxers and socks, there's card games and board games inside of that. For what I think like the future holds for for me in particular, it would be my passions, like what I love to do in life and what I love sharing with other people and that is herbalism. I am studying to become an herbalist and be certified so that way I can make more natural products for people to use on a daily basis. I think it is something that comes from our ancestry that's been lost and people don't really realize how much plants and herbs that are out there that we just are hiking past that are so useful in our everyday life. And I wanna share that it get, brings me so much joy making things and then just giving it to somebody and seeing their faces light up and that they love what like the product I made. So that's like my ultimate goal is to just have my own herb garden and make things for people. And it brings me happiness and it brings them happiness. When I first uh, started living in a vehicle, um, I had this idea that what would motivate me the most to live this kind of lifestyle is jumping off that cliff or, or swimming under the waterfall and things like that. I completely underestimated the, the community aspect of this lifestyle. And I have touched lives, people have touched mine, and that fuels my passion more than anything. 
it makes me want to go out and, and jump off the cliffs and swim under the waterfalls and high line and rock climb and, and share this mutual love for um, a planet that is in jeopardy. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's something that's worth experiencing and I want to preserve um, the respect for our earth and I want to preserve indigenous values and give back to communities. On the other side of the coin, I'm a very, a very uh, project-oriented person and I can't stick around for so long in one place. So it's just finding a happy medium in between that um, and knowing when it's time to invest and to not. I do love working with my hands and I'm currently designing a, a little turf house, a little Viking Nordic tiny home um, that we're gonna be putting up in Tennessee. And we have this other plan that we're gonna be putting a shipping container here in Moab. And uh, hopefully we get to have our own little tour again, um, doing, doing those too. So traveling outside of the country and uh, finding indigenous communities that we can immerse ourselves in and learn from and uh, spread that knowledge, um, knowledge that, that is being lost, we want to preserve. So this is the back of the vehicle. We have our spare tire on the door. I just put it on the door with an H bracket I got online. Um, up top we have a backup camera which proves to be very useful. Above that, um, on the roof we have a massive roof rack and I put, a, I put boards on it to make it somewhat of a patio so people can hang out up there. Moving on in, we have the garage below the bed. Um, I have my all of my tools, every tool that I used in building out the van, I have, I just couldn't leave them behind. I love building um, and I build out other people's vans here in Moab, Utah. So yeah, it's all donation based and 25% of the donation goes to charity. So this is our water compartment. Um, it houses a 22 gallon water tank and it cuts out around the wheel well. So we have space left over it's kind of like a cubby we keep, uh, hoses, filters, all things water related. Um, above the compartment is a bench slash shelf that I, I put skateboards on for now. And then I have a couple fishing rods and our fire stuff. So I have this fire staff. We love spinning fire in Moab. It's kind of a scene. Lots of people like spinning fire and it's a great way to, to uh, bring a community together if everyone's hanging out at a camp spot. Um, the crowd just comes and we're all in one spot at the same time just enjoying the magic of fire. Towards the back of the garage we have totes. They're just full of adventure gear. Uh, we love highlining and rock climbing, rope swinging, uh, camping, hiking, just really anything that gets us more involved and in touch with, with nature and our surroundings. This is our solar side on the left side. Uh, we have 300 watts of solar. It's three 100 watt panels and it's all going through to a 200 amp hour lithium ion battery. Uh, the inverter is posted on the side and fuse block. It's a really simple setup, easy to do, very DIY friendly. I'm very happy with the amount of solar we have. Um, we don't even use as much power that it provides. So I think we're pretty, we're pretty stoked about that. Sometimes I'll actually even run power tools off of it. So it works out good, I'm happy with it. So next to the solar, we have our little propane gas tank housing. Um, it's super easy to replace. It's just these little latches that um, you pop off and the door comes off. And on the side of the propane house, we have our fire extinguisher. I build out vans in my spare time here in Moab. I love uh, building out people's vans because it's for a good cause. Um, it's all donation based. I don't do it for the money. 25% of it goes to a charity of that person's choosing. And um, it's just a, a great way to bring a community together. And uh, I, really, I really enjoy it. So honestly, we're a little bit nervous doing this tour because <laughs> um, I've never posted a single thing about any of the vans 
I've built any of uh, any of the rigs that I that I tried living in. It's been a very private thing. I didn't want to contaminate my intentions at all. So yeah, we were a bit nervous doing this this van tour. But if we can inspire somebody out there, or just motivate people to to get out and and challenge themselves, whether it's van life or any other nomadic lifestyle or even just like pushing themselves on whatever they're passionate about. I feel like that's worth it. So um, if you do like uh, van builds and van tours and, and uh, van tutorials, then you can subscribe to our YouTube channel um, that, we, that we're going to start up soon. A uh, little bit overdue on that. And our Instagram, uh, you can follow us there as well. Um, we'll be posting like anything from adventure videos to to van tutorials, to time lapses of build outs, um, community get togethers, gatherings, hell, rock climbing, highlining, rope swinging, Everything. spinning fire, all, all of that yeah. stuff. So um, if you're into it, subscribe. The links for all of that will be in the description below. Thank you for checking us out. And it really means a lot that we got to share our little van and tiny home with all of you. I think one of our biggest things here is just getting ourselves back immersed in nature and we hope that you do the same thing. And Get outside and adventure. Um, the earth has so much stoke to give and you have a lot, a lot, a lot to give to the earth as well. So mm -hmm. go outside and play. Get off YouTube. Yeah. <laughs>